a fascinating session on, uh, on uh, sarcoma. I've just been listening to a story from um, Tim Penkevel and uh, Dirk Strauss from the Royal Marston. Dirk, first of all, you, you've been looking at uh, breast sarcoma. Can you explain to me why you decided to look at this disease? Sarcoma such, um, as a whole disease is a very rare condition. It's one of the rare cancers. Um, and specifically, the, the sarcomas that occur in the breast are, are very rare. And we don't have very good data on, on how these patients are treated, what the outcomes and what the best management options for these patients are. And that's why we thought we, we have a collection of a reasonable sized group of patients. Let's analyze them and see see how we manage them and, and, and what made a difference in the outcome. Now, Tim, you've just presented the work here and you have got some quite optimistic news. Now, that's not to say that this is an easy challenge for clinicians, but could you tell us about the study that you've published and you've now been talking about? Yes, so we uh, evaluated 63 patients who uh, had all had breast sarcoma, uh, of which about uh, a half had had radiation before and the other half hadn't. Uh, and particularly we looked at a group of uh, sarcomas called the angiosarcomas, which are more common after previous breast irradiation. Uh, they happen in about one in a thousand uh, cases uh, of irradi after irradiation for other diseases. Um, and what we found really was that uh, we can gain local control, which is important uh, in, in these cases, uh, by doing reasonably good operations and that when we looked at all the breast sarcomas as a whole we actually got fairly good uh, survival outcomes uh, at both two and five years. And Dirk, doctors have been a bit scared of this disease haven't they? It, it has been it, it, regarded it, as having a dismal prognosis. It is a definitely, a, it's definitely a difficult disease to manage. It's a disease that has an aggressive biology and, and very frequently after operation can come back in the same site that you've done your operation or they also have the potential to spread to the, uh, to the lungs and, and cause distant metastasis. So it is a difficult disease to, to manage. But Tim, can you tell us what were some of the good things that emerged from your study? So I think it's extremely reassuring that when we look at all breast sarcomas, we can achieve uh, two and five year survival rates of between 80% uh, and 90%. And, and that's reassuring that we can get good, such good survival data. I think one of the other things to say is that although this is a relatively, for the size of the literature, large series of angiosarcomas, what we're definitely not saying is that this is such a big worry that people shouldn't have uh, irradiation after primary breast uh, cancer, because I think one of the other things that we, we'd say after this study is that um, uh, radiation, yes, it in some cases causes this problem, but probably saves more lives than it costs. Local recurrence was an issue, and in fact, the radiation naive patients were different from those who had their sarcoma caused by radiation, weren't they? They were, and this probably is because of what we call a field change effect, which means that uh, throughout the whole, obviously, there is a margin of safety built into radiation treatment, which includes treating some normal tissue that wasn't involved in the cancer. Uh, and that normal tissue will still sustain the effects of the radiotherapy without the, without the effect of, of uh, treating the primary cancer. Um, and that really is why they're more difficult to get local control over because you have to make sure you excise all the tissue that was irradiated. And so by definition, they need bigger surgery. But what we're saying is that the bigger surgery actually can produce some good outcomes. Now, at the Royal Marsden, your unit is a specialist unit yeah. and you did get good survival data. Is it possible to reproduce those survival results elsewhere? What do you have to do to get that expertise? So there's extensive data across a whole range of cancer, cancer primary types that actually um, centralising services, treating in high volume units, particularly in the rare cancers like this, will improve outcome. And uh, I think really uh, the finding that we did very well uh, comparatively at the Marsden um, is good. It shows that again centralisation is going to help treatment of these cancers. And yes, it is possible to get these um, results elsewhere, but in the context of a centralised service that treats a lot of sarcoma patients. This is definitely true, what Tim says, and, and the importance of grouping these patients in centralised centres of excellence are that everyone involved in the, in the team looking after them are specialists in their field. So not only the surgeons, the oncologists, the plastic surgeons, the ITU personnel, the theatre, everyone is a specialist looking at 
specific conditions and then create the, the expertise and the centre of excellence that you need to could manage you, these, these could conditions. Could you explain some of the tricks of the trade to actually get the kind of management results? What do you specifically I, I, need to do? I think it starts off with, with not only having the surgeons that treat the patients that is ex exposed to large numbers of those rare conditions, but also having the, the pathologists to analyze the, the, the pathology, to have the radiologists that look at the scans and can help you with the planning, and uh, the plastic surgeons that will help you to, to reconstruct the, the defects caused by the surgeons, um, in support with the, the nursing staff, the psychological support, and uh, the, 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 the whole multidisciplinary team that is involved in looking after these complex uh, patients. But mainly it's surgery? It's mainly surgery, but uh, definitely they are all managed in a big team and you need the, the help of the radiologists to look at the scans for you, the help of the pathologist to analyse the specimens, the oncologist to, to decide which patients need adjuvant treatment, um, the plastic surgeons to help the um, sarcoma surgeons to, to manage the wounds and to close the defects that we create. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a multidisciplinary team effort. Is there any evidence that the quality of the end result when you've resected influences the ultimate outcome, survival and so on? I think that is m most directly linked to the local recurrence. If one can gain wide, clear margins of the tumour, we will hopefully establish local control so the patient will not have um, a problem with a tumour fungating in, from her breast. However, there's slight it's more difficult to directly relate the tumour to the, the potential it has uh, to, to spread to the lungs and, and how that relates to your surgery. Um, that's probably more dictated by the tumour biology rather than the, the surgery that we, that, we, that we can do. What about adjuvant systemic therapy? That's very difficult in sarcoma because for the majority of the sarcomas the, we don't have chemotherapy that is effective and for the, especially for the breast sarcoma patient group they are not chemosensitive or they're not sensitive to the treatments we have at the moment so we don't use them. In, in, in the um, majority of sarcoma surgery we complement the operation with radiotherapy but especially in the patient group that already had radiotherapy we, we, we can't um, complement it with the uh, radiotherapy and we just have to rely on, on, on surgery as sole treatment. So could I ask you both to say what are the clinical implications of this report that you've delivered here in this beautiful part of France? Tim. So I think the, the take-home message, if you like, from, our, from, from what we've said is uh, it's vitally important you do a good operation and that good operations probably happen best in high volume units, but that good results are achievable within that setting. I agree completely with Tim. These patients are definitely best managed by a group of patients, a group of people that is experienced in managing this difficult patient group.